short module, we will prove basic properties of open and closed sets. The proofs are more or less exactly the same as what we have seen for the real numbers. So we shall be very brief in the proofs. Proposition. Any open ball in a metric space X is open and the proof is rather trivial. So let BXR subset of X be an open ball. Let Y be an element of BXR. Now we have to show that this uh, point Y is an interior point of BXR. So uh, what we do is choose, choose R1 by definition to be nothing but R minus BXY. Exactly what we did for the real numbers then clearly this R1 is greater than 0 and if you consider B which is just BYR1 the triangle inequality will immediately tell you that B is a subset of BXR. In fact to see this more precisely let Z be a point of B then D xz will be less than or equal to dxy plus dyz which is less than or equal to r minus dxy plus r which is equal to r. So this proof was rather trivial. Now we are going to do a different characterization of open and closed sets. We are going to show that open and closed sets are dual notions. So again the proofs of this is very very similar to what we have already seen for the real numbers. So proposition a set G subset of X which is a metric space is open is open if and only if the complement of G is closed okay so the proof on to the proof so what you do is we just define f to be the complement of g in x now assume g is open assume g is open now our goal is to show that f is closed so let xn let xn in f be a sequence be a sequence such that xn converges to x okay we have to show that x we have to show that x is also an element of f if x is in g then for some r greater than 0 some are greater than 0 bxr is a subset of g that's just because this set g is an open set therefore x must be an interior point therefore we can find a ball such that bxr is fully contained in g well this means this means x cannot be x cannot be another end point at the end point point of F a contradiction right what will happen is after a particular stage we must have Xn is there in this open set BXR that's simply not possible because BXR is now a subset of G okay now suppose suppose f is closed suppose fx f is closed then 
then um, each point each point x in g x in g cannot rather I'll write it in a slightly better way grammatically then any point x in g cannot be an adherent point adherent point point of f right because f and g are complements of each other now the next exercise the next exercise exercise finishes the proof finishes the proof so i'm going to leave a very simple exercise for you guys to do which is exactly similar to what you have done previously for adherent and limit points in the case of the real numbers so exercise is the following let x be a metric space let x be a metric space and let s be a subset of x okay then a point x in x is a limit point is a limit point of s if and only if for each r greater than 0 b x r intersect s set minus this single element x is never empty okay in a similar way uh, x is an adherent point is an adherent point of s of s if and only if for all r greater than 0 b x r intersect s is non empty okay these are exactly similar to the characterizations that you have previously seen for adherent and limit points in the context of real numbers okay the final uh, proposition of this short video is the characterization the characterization of closures okay so this is characterization of closure This just says given S subset of X again a metric space again a metric space then S closure is the smallest closed set smallest closed set set that contains contains s okay so there are two parts to this first is to show that s closure is in fact a closed set which is uh, i mean if that were not the case the nomenclature closure is a really stupid name second part is to show that s closure is the smallest closed set so let's go ahead and prove this so let xn xn be a sequence in s closure okay now since xn's are elements of x closure we can find we can find yn in s such that such that d xn yn is less than 1 by n we can do this because each xn is an adherent point of s therefore we can always do this okay now fix epsilon greater than 0 fix epsilon greater than 0 um, okay so i missed a step let xn uh, be elements of s closure be a sequence converging to x in s okay so this this is important so let xn be a sequence in s closure that converges to a point uh, so again a slight error again 
there should be x, x in s closure or rather again this should be just x in x our goal is to show that this x is actually an element of s closure which will prove that s closure is in fact closed so fix epsilon greater than 0 we can find we can find n so large so large that simultaneously 1 by n is less than epsilon by 2 and d uh, xn x is also less than epsilon by 2. Then a trivial application of the triangle inequality would tell you that d y n x is less than epsilon consequently y n converges to x and this means x is an adherent point adherent point of s which means x is an s closure this shows that the closure of a set is always a closed set so this concludes this video on basic properties of open and closed sets and you're watching this course on real analysis Thank you.